Nicely done. Welcome, everybody. Um, so it's great to be here. Uh, at this point, we're going to take a little fellowship break. Kids, see you later. Have a great time in class. And I have a prompt question because we're going to read uh, an entire chapter about a great meal. And then we're going to have a great meal. So let's sort of whet your appetites right now and start talking about great meals. What is your favorite meal. And I don't necessarily mean your favorite food, although if you want to talk about your favorite food, you can do that. I mean your best meal experience, like sitting down at a restaurant with your favorite food and your favorite people or some family meal that you have or something like that. More like the experience, not the food per se. Of course, the food is part of it. And just so you know, we're going to have some amazing food in, oh, an hour, Maybe a little bit less than that. Maybe 45 minutes. Maybe 45 minutes. <laughs> yes. we, ordered, we ordered Indian Pavilion, and I ordered probably way too much food. All right. So there's a lot of it. There's lots of options. It's going to be incredible. We're going to have a great feast. But before we do that, we're going to read about a great feast, and we're going to talk about our favorite meal right now. Let me say a quick prayer, and then we'll have just a few minutes for fellowship. All right. Let's pray. God, thank you for bringing us here. Uh, on a Sunday evening. Thank you, God, we need to worship you uh, together collectively. And I pray that we can worship you everywhere and all the time, wherever we are, God, but especially right now as we're together as a community, as the body of Christ. God, help us to put aside anything that distracts us, uh, anything that is uh, in the way of us being wholehearted and all in in worshiping you and uh, being present. And Father, I pray that as uh, Ilona and Theo lead our thoughts of communion, and as we read through John 13, um, God, that you're glorified in everything that we do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's take just a few minutes. You can stand up. You can mill about the room and talk to one another about your favorite meal. Here we go. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> Okay, why don't we wrap up the talk about food as far as we We love great meals, right? And it's not just the food, it's also the company, it's the conversation, it's the memories. And as I said before, we're going to read in just a bit about an incredible meal in John 13 that had impact, then profound impact. And it's still a profound impact today. 
And then we're going to share an incredible meal, hopefully great conversation, great company, great food, and great memories. Okay. Um, so right now, before communion, we have two songs, right? So we're going to sing, uh, it is well with my soul. No, just one song. So, so should we stand? What, this is a standing. Yeah, it's well with my soul. I when is my love So we're going to be reading out of John 15, which is actually at the same dinner that we're going to be from later. So we're going to sit down the conversation. Um, we're going to start in John 15, verse 9. We're going to kind of set the scene. This is the last supper. You just know, with disciples. Um, and they're there together having dinner. And this is the same night that he's going to go to the Garden of Gethsemane and pray. And then all his disciples are going to serve him. And then the next day, he's going to get bogged and beaten and crucified. So that's that's this night right before that. So that kind of sets up this whole conversation here. We're just gonna read a little bit of an excerpt, and then I was gonna shift. So starting in verse nine, it says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my command, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's command and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life 
but wants friends. You are my friends. You do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because the servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. So, each. So, we're all in a relationship together as brothers and sisters, and we have a relationship with the one that brought us together, and that is Jesus. In this scripture, Jesus shares his love for us, saying, I loved you, I called you friends, I chose you, I appointed you, and in the ultimate example of love, he laid down his life for us. Jesus like, come to me, remain in me. I know you're not perfect, but I love you, and I want to have a relationship with you. I want you to be my friend. You're more than a servant to me. You're my friend. And Jesus helps us to understand what true love and true relationships look like, and there's no greater example than it. So for me, on a personal note, I was like a super shy kid. So talking to people was really hard. And in my friendships, feeling like I was close to people or feeling like you wanted to people was, was something that like I didn't experience that often because I felt like I wasn't enough. But the thing about Jesus is that I don't have to be enough. I don't have to be perfect. He still wants me. He still wants to be my friend. And he's given me a family with people that love me. And that means so much to me. The fact that Jesus can look at me and be like, I don't know, I want to call you my friend means so much. And that would make like little me cry. Um, yeah, he's taught us to love each other and be friends to each other. So as we take communion, let's remember to sacrifice on the cross and give thanks to Jesus for the freedom and friendship found in him. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that we get to be here coming together, taking the bread that represents his body and the juice that represents his blood. And we get to remember that he died for us. Um, right after he called us his friends. Um, and chose to love us in the greatest way possibly do so. Thank you that we're able to remember that he chose us, he appointed us, he's calling us to him. He, he did that, we did it. He did it when uh, we were at our worst. Um, yeah, he just take, uh, right, we can take this time, remembrance, and reflection, and then gratitude of friends. Christ and Luther. And we wrap up our community meditation. We're going to transition here to uh, hear our sermon. We're going to sing, sing Psalm 220. We're going to sing about God's goodness and his care for us and love for us. Salvation gives us courage to be strong, take our way to the Lord. Amen. Let's say and sing 220. Be strong, take our book. Be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. Be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. Though an army proceeds me, I will not be. Though an army proceeds me, I will not be. The war break out against me in the dead of the night. My enemies will tremble because the Lord is my light. God, my Savior, though an army deceives me, I will not be. Be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. Be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. One thing of you I have, Lord, this I will see. One thing of you I have, Lord, this I will see. To dwell with me for the rest of my days, I know you will defend me as I walk in your ways. God, my Savior, one thing of you I have, Lord, this I will see. Be so take heart. And wait for the Lord. Be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. 
Hear my voice when I call on the Lord and answer my prayer. Hear my voice when I call on the Lord and answer my prayer. Oh, the day we you will not turn away. When Christ is trying to drop me, you will still hear me say, God, my Savior, hear my voice when I call the Lord. All right. Let's get some a lot of work for that song. A lot of words. Good. <laughs> uh, let's go to John chapter 13. We're continuing our march through John. Um, and the Crackles did a great job of leading our thoughts last week through John chapter 12. And uh, Jesus was anointed at Bethany, as you recall, um, and his feet were washed. And now, as we transition into John 13, Jesus is the one who's going to be doing the washing of feet. And uh, it's really an amazing passage. Basically, I get to talk a lot. I get up here and talk a lot. I preach a lot. And that's good. You know, hopefully, I don't know. Good for me. <laughs> uh, no, I, I guess the point that I'm making is it's good to preach. It's good to ex expound on the Word of God. Today, we're doing it. It's the same time. Our uh, tongue is feeling I'm going to talk a little bit. Such a nice, unexpected. Uh, it's good to have you guys. So it didn't have to put everybody here. But uh, because you look up and you see this natural wood. There it is. Okay, All right. Uh, I'm going to just let Jesus do the talking and the scriptures do most of the talking. And I might sprinkle in a little bit of context. We're just going to read the entire chapter. Uh, and then we're going to get a chance to actually practice what Jesus tells us to practice here. So let's. Start reading John chapter 13 in verse 1. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. Now, we're going to pause right there for just for a second. The NIV translates this phrase, the full extent of his love. The Mormon translates this, he loved them till the end. The literal translation of the Greek uh, can mean a few different things, to, to termination, to the end, or eternally. And so what John is trying to convey here, I think is several principles, that Jesus loved his disciples from the beginning all the way to the end, that he loved them completely, that he loved him with his full self in every way that he could, and that this is a picture, a window into how Jesus loves eternally. And all of that is packed into the phrase, the full extent of his love. Verse two, the evening was one with me, sir, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. I'm going to pause here again. Uh, I think the reason John gives us this insight, this detail, John gives us more detail uh, about the internal workings of Jesus' heart and mind, what he was thinking and feeling more than any of the other Gospels. And he does that because he writes about himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Uh, we know that he's one of Jesus' closest friends and followers. And so we get in John's Gospel some kind of the thoughts behind the eyeballs of Jesus. And it's really amazing. And in this passage in particular, I think we see the confidence of Jesus, or in other words, the identity of Jesus. So he's able to take off his power garments and become a servant and take the position of a servant and wash stinky, nasty, dirty feet with no reservations and no insecurities 
because he knows who he is and he knows where he came from and he knows how God feels about him and he knows how he feels about God. And so he's free from anybody else's expectations. He's free from feeling the need to prove himself to anybody. Let's just pause for a minute and think about what that might feel like. Maybe we've had little moments where we felt confident in God and ourselves in relation to God and not having to prove anything to anyone, not in an arrogant way, but just in a, I know who I am before God. And just think about it. Maybe a moment when you got a, a glimpse of that feeling. And that, that sentiment, I think, is what frees Jesus up to just be totally humble and unabashedly loving and servant to his disciples. He knows who he was. He knows who God is. And so he could serve and love completely. So he got up from the meal, took off the outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin, this is verse five, and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel. Was wrapped around. He came to Simon, who said to, him, said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And you get this sense that Simon and probably all of this site like, just felt awkward. Like this is this is an awkward meal on a lot of planes. And you're gonna see in a minute why. Jesus is like somebody's gonna betray me, and they're all looking around like you, me up. That's really awkward. But that might not be the most awkward thing that happened at the meal. I think we're reading about the most awkward thing. The guy who you consider your teacher, your rabbi, your Lord and Savior, they knew this at this point, has taken off his clothes and is wearing a towel and is down by your feet, scrubbing your feet. And thank God for Peter, because he said, well, you would all do that. Whoa, you're going to do this for me? You sure? And Jesus replies in verse 7, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. There's a lot of that in that statement too. And I think as we can imagine and think about what we know about Peter and Peter became, he had become a servant. And he followed in Jesus' footsteps in many ways. Verse 8, no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part of me. And, and, and thank God for Peter again. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands. And my hands, well, I feel like that's how Spencer would react. And that's what Spencer would say. I mean that in the best way. It is so enthusiastic. And that's Peter, too. Just, okay, fine. And just, just douse me, man. Just do the whole thing. And I love that. And Jesus in verse 10 says, the person who has come to that is only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And you are clean. Go, not if you want to be. All right, and here's where it's really, you know, there's layers of awkwardness. And the guys are thinking, what are you talking about that? So if I were there, I'd start looking around. You, you're not talking about me. Oh, no. Verse 11, he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone's clothes. Verse 12, when he finished washing the feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked him. Let's pause right there and try and answer that question. And this is not a rhetorical question. We can have some some open discussion. So let's picture that we're there and think about what Jesus just did for us. And now he asks us the question, do you understand what I've just done? What's our answer? Do we, do we understand? And if so, what do you understand from this? What do you take from this, this passage? It doesn't, I'm not 
fishing for the right answer. It's more like, what do you think? Yeah. He, he's, he's at the, the, the last supper and he's just taking it later. You, you just walk my feet, shock it off. I don't know what to do about this, but that's what happened. The deal's just in the moment. Okay. Yeah. okay. Who else? What do you Do you understand? Yeah. When a power dynamic gets flipped, it's it's weird and unsettling, I think is the right word. Yeah. And there was a definite power dynamic here. Yeah, so what he was doing was humbling himself, but it came across maybe as humiliation, which is different. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Do you understand what he's just done there? Have you ever have you ever tried to give somebody something and they're like, oh no, you don't have to. That's and it sort of steal the joy out of the gift, right? Like, I don't want to have to. If I had to, it would be weird. I'm choosing to do this thing. It's your choice to accept it or not. Right? And in the same way, I think it was the disciples' choice to accept this act of service or not. Yeah. Josh, were you gonna say something? Okay. So let's Let's continue. Uh, verse, we'll, we'll read the question again. Do you understand what I've done for you? Be asked in verse 13. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. There is his identity, there is his confidence, right? Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example so that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Verse 18, I'm not referring to all of you. I know those who I have chosen, but this is the fulfill of the scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up steel against me. I'm telling you now, before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am he. I tell you the truth, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. This is sort of like what Henry was referring to. I'm telling you all this stuff now so that when crazier stuff happens, you don't freak out too much. You're going to freak out a little bit. But I want you to know, I know what's about to happen. And so I'm telling you, to your face, what's about to happen. Verse 21, after he said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray you. Boy, the temperature just turned up in the room. His disciples stared at one another. I mean, they're all around one table, eating all the same food. And Jesus says, one of you is going to betray me. And he's, he's like seized with trouble, with angst, with emotion. It's obvious. And they're all looking at him, looking at one another. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, and this is referring to John, the gospel writer, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, hey, ask him. Which one means? Leaning back against Jesus, he asked, and Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it's the one whom I give this piece of bread when I dip it in a dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into the room. What you're about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him, since Judas I turned to money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what he needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Ju Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. Verse 31. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify him. Son of himself and glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. 
and you'll look for me. And just as I told the Jews, so I tell you where I'm going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. That's a little ominous. <clears throat> Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you? I will lay down my life for you. And then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Uh, for the remainder of our time here, I just want to focus on <clears throat> verse 34. A new command I give you, love one another. Okay. What's new about that? Is that a new command? Had they not heard that their entire lives? What's new about that? Again, non-rhetorical, this is an opportunity to sort of share your thoughts with you. Yeah. So they knew the commands, love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind, soul, and strength. And the next word is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. But the new part is love your neighbor as I love you. That's different. That's different. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's the that's the sentiment. Okay, I care about myself and take care of myself to some extent. And I can do that to the people around me, in particular my neighbor. And then we're told in the Gospels to ask the question, well, who is my neighbor? Uh, and that changes our mindset around love. But if we're thinking about how we started this passage, Jesus showed them the full extent of his love or his love to completion. Then we see that the new part of this command is love your neighbor as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. And love moves from a sentiment or sensation to sacrifice. It moves from sentiment to sacrifice. Self-sacrifice in particular, and humility, service, ultimate love, giving of oneself for somebody else. And as we read in John chapter 15, during communion, greater love has no one than this, right? To lay down your life. And sometimes it's in this amazing act where you're a hero and you save somebody. But those are few and far between. Usually, it's little every day of self-sacrifice to be able to serve other people and love other people and put yourself aside not because you have no identity and don't know who you are and let other people trample on you rather than apply jesus because you know who you are you know you're god's child and so with confidence you can be humble that's a, a new part of the command i think a new command i give you and so Rather than just sort of talk about it, which is good, we need to talk about it, we need to read, we need to hear sermons and all of that, we're going to get a chance to practice. So we have some amazing food over there. But what I want us to do is practice serving one another. And I'm not going to organize it, I'm not going to tell you who has to serve, who, or in what order, but rather than going through and getting our own plate and salivating all over the, the, the stuff that we're about to eat, let's salivate over, no, no. <laughs> Why don't we figure out somebody else to serve in the room and make sure they get their meal and then allow somebody to serve you? And it's going to be a little awkward because everybody's going to want to go serve first, right? But if you do that, they decide to work. So somebody has to just sit down and let someone serve them. And somebody has to go initiate and, and be the server. And then the roles can flip, okay? So when we dismiss and we go eat dinner, there, you can sit here or there, or there's big round tables uh, in the auditorium here. You can sit there as well. There's probably room for more people there, maybe six or eight folks in those tables. And let's just take turns serving. And somebody's going to have to sit and allow themselves to be served, and someone's going to have to serve. I'm going to give you a little hint as to our menu over here so that you know what you're ordering. All right. So there's lots of rice. 
You can use rice as sort of a bed, obviously, for some of the yummy stuff that comes in sauce. There is spinach paneer, which is like a, a cubes of cheese in a spinach creamy sauce. It's really yummy. There's a, a vegan mixed vegetable dish in sauce. There's chicken masala, which is like really, really good orange colored chicken. Um, there's one other thing, there's brown lentils, which are really, really great and a great brown lentil sauce. There's also lamb biryani, which is, if you don't know what biryani is, it, that, that's gonna be what my order primarily. So it's lamb, obviously, uh, which is really great. But biryani is sort of like Indian fried rice. It's not a great comparison, but it's a, it's a rice dish with lots of spices and some vegetables and lamb all mixed in. Uh, and there's samosas. And there's non flatbread uh, with butter and garlic, and there's three different types of sauces. Okay, so as you're getting really hungry, I just want you to remember we're serving one another too. Okay, so uh, but just so you know what you're ordering and you know what you're getting somebody else. That's that's our meal. There's three veg dishes and three meat dishes plus uh, rice and all of the basics. Okay, and it's just an opportunity for us to practice the very thing that Jesus tells. His disciples. Now you know how I love you. You're blessed if you do it. That's the deal. Okay. Uh, we're going to close in a prayer and we have a couple of announcements and a final song. Here, I'll take the baby. I'll take the baby. Come here, baby. Okay, let's pray. God, thank you so much for Jesus and his example. Thank you, Father, that we see the full extent of Jesus' love and how specifically he expressed his love to his disciples, the people in his life. And I pray, God, that we can specifically practice uh, that type of love with one another, that we can love each other in the way that Jesus loves us, in a humble and confident way, in a self-sacrificing way, in a just, sentimental way. And uh, help us to do that tonight and also as we leave these walls and we go out from here. God, help us to grow in our capacity to love like Jesus, not just the neighbors who are around us, the people in our family or community, but grow in our capacity to love everybody in the way that you do. And uh, Father, we want to pray for the food that you bless the food and our time, the meal that we have together. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Couple of quick announcements here. Oh, that's not what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do. So this Wednesday it's family groups. Uh, we will uh, at our house. We'll meet at 7 p.m. and we're going to have some snacks and let refreshments. And we're going to watch the next episode of The Chosen. Uh, Frankel 7:30. Some similar plan. And if you don't know where to go, talk to either Frankel or Malcolm, myself, and uh, we'll figure it out for you. Next Sunday we're back here at 5 p.m. Uh, if you want to give a contribution and it's not a recurring, uh, you can do that on the Tidely app. And if you have any questions about that, come talk to me. I'll help you do all of that. And finally, it's dinner time after our last song, Lion of Judah. Let's stand and sing our final song. Oh, no, you were going to. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. I fully seriously didn't hear everything you said. So I have to check out the there first, so I need to serve the first. <laughs> gotcha.
specifically to honor and uh first of all the the three guys who just got baptized the last week come on up here um uh, 
So we got you guys some special leather bound big print Bibles with all the bells and whistles and cool stuff. And also, I know he got a free Bible, a uh, paperback, and it feels really sentimental to it. So just hold on to it. Okay. Hold on to it. And uh, we're very happy to have you guys in the family. Let's give it up for our three new brothers here. <laughs> Uh, and you may be seated. And now Lauren would like to honor a few other very special folks. Yes. So we are going to quickly, yeah, honor our graduates. You guys guys want to honor If you are graduating, here, come on up here. So we have, I believe, four graduates. Is that correct? Um. So we're going to share I have like a, a minute of sharing about each of our graduates, just what they've meant to us and um, for you guys to know them as well. For those of you, well, you guys do know them, but <laughs> yeah. so um, I will go ahead and go first. So, and we have these beautiful months that we're giving to them as a uh, reminder of their time here. And so um, I will go ahead and share first about you, Theo. So, uh, Theo, I am super grateful for the four years you have spent here. And you came in as a freshman and then got slammed with the pandemic, <laughs> which is a which is a tough way to, to begin college. But uh, I think it's been amazing how you had really just risen above the challenges that have come your way. And um, and I think the thing I love about you, Theo, is just there's two things. One, you're incredibly hardworking. It's also really fun. And uh, anyone that knows you knows what a servant you are, and how you, you serve behind the scenes, you give behind the scenes, and you don't like being acknowledged or receiving credit for what you do. But a lot. Yeah. Um, but we know we'll see you. And at least we have Spencer, so we feel like we have a little, a little piece of you here. <laughs> You're your own person. But you are your own person, I guess. So. Love you, and here is a mug for you. You're welcome. And Abigail, I know you're graduated in August, but we're going to honor you now, and I'm sure we'll honor you then too. But um, while we have everyone here, so it has been a joy to have you, even though we've had you a shorter time, only two years. We're excited that you're most likely staying here at the Chilean Court, which is really a treat for us because we're so used to people graduating and leaving. Um, so I'm so glad we're going to. It's been a joy to get to know you, and uh, it's really been cool to see like your love and passion for hospitality, what you're learning about in school, but also like you bringing that into the church and your love of children, and um, you know, how you use those gifts and beliefs from um, here and your heart to serve. We get to know you more over the next year as well. And I have a month for you too. And Godwin, I am gonna have you know share about you. So I'm gonna out of the way here. <laughs> All right. So I'll share a little bit of the story here. Got me back to the this week. And then kind of later in the week. Full day, I'm like, oh, I'm so excited to have some lunch and sit down and watch Pokemon. That's what I do. <laughs> and God comes over and he's like, hey, can I ask you like a deep question? I'm like, be. <laughs> It's really incredible because Godwin has gone from somebody who's like, oh, I kind of know what I'm doing. He's got it very well down to somebody who's super humble, asking a lot of questions, which is really great and frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really great. Um, so I just want to encourage you with that. I mean, I've seen you grow in a lot of ways um, this year, and I know no one is high school, but it's been really cool to get to know you now um, better. And I really encourage you to keep asking. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I, I yeah, I'll give you your mug after as well. <laughs> All right, and then I got Jackie too, right? Yeah. Wait, well, okay, so I met Jackie last year in jogging class. <laughs> um, uh, so we just kind of weird. But anyway, uh, we got to know each other this year, and it's been really cool because you always do really good at welcoming people into your life. You know, that when you first welcome me into your life, and just kind of what's going on, how you're doing, and Things that you're feeling, it was really cool. We had a really, really good picture. And you got so much in that. I remember a couple months ago, we hosted a lot of people. 
I'm really grateful for these two hosting people because we're all roommates. And it's always my people coming over. But one of them came and asked me, Jackie, I baptized last week. I know, it's, and it's like, well, this week. A couple months ago, that person asked me, hey, is Jackie a disciple? Because she's just, like hosting for fun and he's so like welcoming like fun. And I was like, no, but he is that like, he is that way. He's built that skill. So keep doing that. That's praised a lot throughout the entire Bible. So keep being welcome and keep being hospitable. And uh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to miss you. It's especially sad to lose you, Dr. Jackie, after like, you know, just really getting to know you guys this semester. Um, so we would really quickly want to share what you're graduating in and where you're going. So we'll know. Like, yeah, we'll start with you, Jackie. We'll follow you, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm graduating. Yeah. For me, I'm graduating in May, and still up here in the hopes of presentation. Uh, I'll be going overseas for three months to India and Japan, and then I'll most likely be working at Mr. Guy. <laughs> okay, Pittsburgh. Right, well, I'm graduating with a civil engineering degree focusing on water resources, but I'll be doing a ministry internship. Um, which take me to Philly for the summer, then Boston for a school year, and then after that, it'll take me abroad somewhere where I don't know. But that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm graduating in August in hospitality management, and I'll be working at Panera and hopefully becoming a manager. In state all right, well, with that, uh, we have some special cake for our, our graduates and everyone else. So please be on the lookout for that. We will dismiss. Sit down. Sit down. Okay, so we're dismissed. You can work amongst yourselves. You can work amongst yourselves. Thank <laughs> you.